Welcome back to another episode of Driving Production. In today's episode, we're finally going to be installing the cold air intake. If you've watched uh, the previous episode I uh, made on this uh, cold air intake, you might have noticed that uh, I actually got paid $75 to uh, sell a few items and get this cold air intake. So I'm really excited to see, well, if it fits first of all, because this is a uh, for a 2014 model year and uh, to see if it uh, does anything if it does uh, if we're gonna see any gains uh, in the car or if it's mostly just induction noise kind of similar to the intake mod uh, we recently did on the Mazda 3 so let's jump right into it and install the cold air intake All right, so very similar to when I did the intake mod uh, on this Mazda 3. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna be removing everything and I'm hoping that it's just gonna slide into place and I won't have to remove the actual bumper. One thing I found kind of interesting, it's the first time I see this, is that the hole for the actual intake is uh, slightly off. So I'm wondering if maybe for the 2014 model, just the way the intake is made, if it was centered, it might not clear the, I don't know, the frame of the vehicle. So it'll be interesting to see if it actually fits in this car or else uh, if not, um, I guess I'll have to sell it. <laughs> Here I actually had to disconnect the mass airflow sensor to get the intake to fit properly. All right, so the cold air intake is finally all installed. The only issue I really had, honestly, was with the mass airflow sensor. I struggled for about probably half an hour, 40 minutes, just trying to get the cable all the way down to the mass airflow. The reason for that was that the mass airflow was pointing, the connector was pointing downwards. I'm not sure if the 2014 and up, the mass airflow was pointing upwards. It might be shaped a little differently because uh, the two bolts uh, on the cold air intake, I could only bolt the connector one way or the actual mass airflow one way, and that would be pointing downwards. And the cable was just about an inch too short uh, for it to go down and plug into it. So I ended up having to drill a hole and make a hole a little closer to the uh, fuse box. That way it would make more of a direct route to the uh, mass airflow connector and that way it just connected in. So that was my biggest str struggle with this. A long time ago I did a res resonator delete so that wasn't uh, there and I really uh, removed the complete resonator when I did the fog lights and I had to remove the full bumper. If you happen to attempt this on your own uh, I think it would be a good idea to just be mindful of that uh, that uh, if you have your resonator you'd probably have to remove the complete assembly to fit the cold air intake because uh, it's going right where the resonator used to be but apart from that everything seems to fit really well uh, the build quality seems pretty good uh, everything plugged into place and now it's just a matter of uh, testing it and seeing how it drives engine is warm I'm gonna go down. All right, let's go for a drive. Vroom, vroom. I wonder if I can just do a quick pull or am I gonna spin? Cause I got too much power in this car. Oh, torque steer, what? All right guys, so it's been a few weeks since I was able to install the cold air intake. Uh, I really wanted to get a feel for the car, how it drove. 
if I notice anything where the power band, if it changed, uh, kind of things like that. So just talking about the induction noise coming from the actual cold air intake, under 4,500 RPM, it's very similar to the uh, intake box I did a few episodes ago. And then past 4,500, I feel like that's when the uh, cold air intake really starts to wake up and like you really start to hear that induction noise coming. And it kind of goes the similar uh, for the power band. I almost feel like maybe at lower RPM, I might have lost like a little bit of torque, uh, but past 4,500 RPM, the pull, like the car pulls a lot more. I would say the intake probably at the top end of the power band probably gave it a little bump close to around 10 horsepower to the car. The induction noise is great uh, when you rev out the car and I feel like the car can rev freer in a sense that uh, it just wants to pull really strongly all the way till the red line. Just gonna pop a U-turn. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a car coming. If I come to a stop now, first gear and if I really step on. I don't know if I would have paid full price for the intake, how I would feel about it, because I think the cold air intake, they hover around $399 or $490, like four or 500 bucks uh, Canadian. So it's quite an expensive mod in relation to the amount of power you're actually getting for the car in that uh, in that perspective. For what I paid or for what I got paid for, I think, well, I mean, if you get paid for any mod, I guess any mod is worth it, right? But if you can get this intake for a rather like cheaper price, I think it would uh, definitely be worth it. If you're paying full price for it, I don't know how I'd uh, feel. Maybe if I went from like no intake box at all, no intake noise to a cold air intake, I would have saw maybe a bigger difference there. And uh, I would have had more induction noise or I, I would have felt like there was more induction noise. So maybe in that aspect, uh, it would make more of a difference. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about the cold air intake. Uh, overall, yeah, I think it's a pretty good mod if you can get a, if you can get it at a decent price. If you have any questions regarding the cold air intake or uh, to see Fitment, if you have a Sky Active uh, second gen yourself, just let me know in the comments below and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And then on top of that, just some rattling noise.